This video was sponsored by CuriosityStream in partnership with my streaming service, Nebula. Hey, happy Friday. This week, India considered building their own app store to replace the Google Play Store. Microsoft turned Windows 10 on ARM from meh to actually kind of a viable platform. And Facebook decided to merge all of their apps to avoid regulation. As always, there's also a tech knowledge quiz. So if you like testing your knowledge, it is linked down in the description. And welcome to the Friday checkout. Okay, my pick of the week is going to be India deciding that, you know what, maybe it's time to build their own app store to replace the Google Play Store. And there's two relatively separate attempts that are being reported. The first one is a bunch of private Indian tech companies thinking about forming an alliance to build their own app store, which seems to be spearheaded by Paytm, one of India's most successful tech startups that just had a big fight with Google. Paytm apparently violated Google Play guidelines around online gambling and was kicked from the store temporarily, which they didn't like, of course, and together with a bunch of others decided that, you know what, they don't like Google telling them what to do and they don't like Google taking a 30% cut while they're at it. Why don't they just build a store for themselves? The other news being reported is a more bizarre one where apparently the Indian government itself is thinking about launching a store of their own as well, where their primary goal would be to ensure India's self-reliance. Hilariously enough, the Indian government already technically has an Android app store with around a thousand apps in it, primarily aimed at government workers. And yeah, it's about as modern looking as you'd expect a government built app store to be. Obviously, there's also talk of the private companies and the government maybe joining forces. And one report even says that the government might make it, quote, mandatory for Android phones to be pre-installed with our apps. It's unclear whether that means whether this Indian app store would be installed alongside the Google Play Store or whether it would just be the Indian app store and the Play Store would be banned. Then obviously these are just early rumors, but with the Indian government pushing for self-reliance across the tech industry, it doesn't seem completely far-fetched. The desire for self-reliance is understandable, of course, especially seeing the incredible destruction that the US government's ban on Huawei and the Indian government's ban on Chinese apps, for example, have caused. But this is also kind of a worrying trend. It's a bit of a domino effect where every individual ban or action might make sense individually, but of course it leads to many others to follow and then soon every government starts banning each other and everyone just has to build up their own tech stack from zero. And uh, I guess that could be exciting and interesting to watch, but it would also be extremely inefficient. Okay, my win of the week will be 64-bit app emulation coming to Windows 10 on ARM, which together with a bunch of other announcements this week is finally making Windows 10 on ARM a legitimate platform. So if you didn't know, Microsoft managed to make full Windows run on ARM processors from Qualcomm a few years ago, which was supposed to bring insanely good battery life, always on data connections and more to laptops. But from the very beginning, it had one clear issue. Traditional Windows programs either had to be recompiled to work on ARM machines, which of course many developers didn't do, or they had to be emulated. And up until recently, Windows could only emulate 32-bit apps for ARM, which means that many advanced programs like video editing stuff, for example, which only has 64-bit versions available, well, those couldn't run on Windows 10 on ARM machines at all. And that's what changed this week. Microsoft announced on Wednesday that so-called X64 emulation is finally coming to Windows 10 on ARM Insider builds on November, meaning that soon enough, pretty much all Windows apps will just run on ARM. And obviously emulation isn't an ideal end state because there's a performance and a battery life hit when compared to running native applications, but it is a necessary step to at least have all the apps running until they all get ported properly to ARM. And in fact, there is news around that too. Microsoft has announced that Teams and Visual Studio Code are getting native ARM versions and that they have started pushing and supporting third-party developers to port their apps to ARM using App Assure as well. Add to that that just yesterday, they have also refreshed the Surface Pro X, their flagship ARM-based Surface device with a new keyboard, a new color, a new processor called the SQ2, which they built together with Qualcomm. And it suddenly seems like Windows 10 on ARM might actually become a viable alternative to regular Intel and AMD-based systems. I was honestly a little afraid that Microsoft would just kind of abandon the platform after they had a really rough start. And especially seeing that Intel and AMD this year have had fantastic problems 
processors, but I'm happy to see that they aren't because I, for one, can't wait to have laptops that can reliably last me two days on one charge. And that's supposed to be the magic of ARM processors. Okay, my fail of the week will be Facebook desperately trying to merge all of their apps together into one big pile on the back end with two major announcements this week. Instagram DMs being merged with Facebook Messenger and a unified account center. So soon you'll be able to merge your Facebook and Instagram conversations and use either app to chat with people on the other platform. And using the new unified account center, you'll be able to manage your payment methods and many other things through both apps from one place. These come right after Facebook trying to unify stories across both platforms by showing Instagram stories on Facebook, forcing Oculus users to log in with Facebook accounts to their headsets, and adding prominent from Facebook badges to all of their apps. And all of these actions form one consistent pattern. Starting early 2019, the New York Times reported Zuckerberg has suddenly decided to merge its previously separate apps into having one unified backend. In large part so he can track users across both platforms, but also to make them in inseparable before antitrust regulators ever get to trying to separate them. Of course, Zuckerberg specifically promised not to merge these platforms when they bought them with WhatsApp, for example, and the WhatsApp and Instagram founders are both against such moves, but they have of course all left the company already, and when was Mark Zuckerberg ever worried about keeping any of his promises anyway? But what I find funny and kind of ironic is that I think this big rush to merge all of these apps together it might actually hurt the Facebook apps themselves. I think requiring Facebook accounts for Oculus headsets was going to turn many potential buyers away. I think plastering the Facebook branding over WhatsApp and Instagram makes them less desirable. And shoehorning Facebook features into Instagram seems like a great way of making people want to use Instagram less. Like all of my friends moved away from Facebook and to Instagram to escape that giant cluttered mess of a platform and every day Instagram feels more and more like it with stories, IGTV, shopping, reels and now Messenger. Like I rarely see photos from my actual friends on Instagram anymore and I thought that that was kind of the point of the platform. Anyway, if you have time on your hands and you don't want to spend it by killing your brain cells over at Instagram, why not try Nebula instead? The video streaming platform built by many of the best educational YouTubers out there, including myself. Nebula has all of our regular YouTube content, including from both of my channels, ad-free of course, and usually released earlier than on YouTube, and on top of that, there are also a ton of really fantastic Nebula originals as well. Real Engineering has a whole series on the logistics of D-Day. Lessons from the Screenplay actually analyzes video games on Nebula the way he analyzes movies on YouTube. Half as Interesting has a whole true crime story and more. Nebula is owned by us, the creators, so we can do whatever content we want without having to worry about pleasing the YouTube algorithm, and watching our content there supports us directly. Better yet, access to Nebula comes for free with a subscription to my sponsor, CuriosityStream, which itself is 26% off right now, so you get both services for just over a dollar a month. CuriosityStream is of course the premier place on the internet for high quality professional documentaries from the founder of the Discovery Channel and they have a huge library of science, nature and history content to binge while you are stuck at home. I'm currently watching Cyber War, which is a documentary on hackers and governments doing nasty things, because that's apparently the world we live in right now, and there's a ton of other great content here from hosts like David Attenborough, Jane Goodall, Stephen Hawking, and more. So check them out at the link in the description, and I'll see you next week.